All right, guys, so you've seen the house getting tore down. I just want to give you a little update. You know, before we get into an unboxing here, I'm going to show you some of my fall baits and tell you what I plan on doing with those and how I plan on using them. So here's what we have now. So now we're waiting for them to dig the footers, pour the footers, and uh, begin uh, putting the house on top of them. All right, so here's something I want to show you. This is where my carport's going to be. I'm going to put a carport out here, be able to put my boat, you know, the house will be right there. But here's something really cool. Check this huge boulder, man. Check this thing out. So this thing was sitting, you know, right there somewhere underneath the ground. And so this thing is actually going to be a place where I'm going to put my house number at. So that'll be pretty cool. But anyway, as the cars go by, you know, I figured I'd uh, give you a little update on the homestead. You know, I hate to tear down the old homestead. It was where my grandmother and grandfather lived for years and years, but uh, a little small. So we're gonna get a new fishing room and I can't wait to get that set up. It's gonna make things so much easier for me. The carport, maybe one of these days, a new boat. If anybody out there wants to talk boat deal, be all right, right. Anyway, so that's what we've got left. Well, let's start talking fishing. Hey, sorry about the traffic in the background. You know, we're filming out here under my parents' carport again. You know, you've seen the house. I am basically homeless right now until we get it back in. So, you know, I'll keep you apprised of that and how that's going. You know, hopefully we're gonna uh, help Bass Geek be more efficient when we get in the new house, we get the carport, we get some things done the way we want. All that being said, you know, I want to share with you a couple of orders. One I got from Land Big Fish and one I got from Tackle Warehouse. And I want to show you some baits that may not normally be baits that you think about in the fall. I want to tell you how I'm going to use those and sort of what I'm going to target with those. And then some other baits in the fall that I stocked up on because of a few of the smaller lakes around me, like Big Cherry Reservoir that you seen me fall into the other day. If you haven't seen that video, go back and look at it. But uh, definitely want to show you what I've got in these boxes. We're gonna start with Land Big Fish, okay? So landbigfish.com, guys, if you don't know about them, you need to make sure you go and check them out. This was actually their uh, Labor Day sale, I believe it was. So I actually picked up a lot of stuff that I, you know, I don't throw a lot of these for a lot of you guys. It may be kind of a normal deal that you throw a lot of, but because there's not a lot of grass in the lakes that I fish, I don't throw a lot of them. However, there are some smaller lakes and ponds that I hope to get to start fishing more regularly for you guys on the bank that I'm gonna be able to start utilizing these baits a little more often. And that is my Z-Man Chatterbaits. So what I basically did is I went through and you know, I've got some big Chatterbaits. I've kind of got, you know, the bladed jigs from several different companies. You know, I've kind of got a mishmash. You know, you, you, you know how it is. You go out and you pick one up here and you pick one up there. You lose one here, you lose one there. So what I really wanted to do is stick to that you know, bought me a few in that quarter, but most of them are gonna be in that three eighths and that half ounce. I feel like that's the most common size. And so that's what I picked up. And you can see this is the Elite because right now, you know, I would probably have just bought the Jackhammers to be honest with you. But because the way everything is, I, I guess because of the, uh, you know, pandemic or whatever, um, you know, supplies are just hard to find in, in, in every size. And so it's kind of hit or miss. So what I did is I, I just kind of mixed and matched throughout the different styles of chatterbait. Now this is an elite and this is a uh, half ounce. This is of course in a black and blue. This is the original Z-Man chatterbait. This is a green pumpkin. 
and that is also a half ounce. Again, we've got our black and blue. I bought two of each, so two, two, you know, because it never fails. You go out there, kind of like my little buzz bait from Cumberland Look Pro Lures. You know, I fell in the water, lost my rod reel and my uh, my bait. So, got to get some more of those in from Cumberland. I love that little quarter ounce buzz bait with the gold blade. Black and blue again and a half ounce. This is a quarter ounce. This is in the original chatterbait. And this is the blue or the shad blue glimmer. Good color if you're fishing around the lake that's got a lot of shad. This is the three eighths ounce and I believe this is a white. Again, just something you know to throw around shad. Real basic colors, green pumpkin, black and blue, and some sort of shad imitator. So so some sort of bluegill or panfish indicator imitator, a, a good black and blue for that dirty water, and then of course a shad, a white. Uh, guys, that's pretty much how I do things. This is the 3 8 ounce. Again, this is in a perch, but it's a very kind of that green, uh, green color, black and blue. Uh, here we go again. This is the also the original chatterbait. Again, another perch, and this is in a 3 8 ounce. So two of those. Here's a quarter ounce in the green pumpkin black. Here's a 3 8 ounce. Again, the original chatterbait, and that is a shad. Here is the chatterbait elite. This is a black and blue, and this is a 3 8 ounce. Again, another white, the original chatterbait. Right there, that is a one quarter ounce. This is a green pumpkin black, and this is also a one quarter ounce. Here we come, this is the original chatterbait. This is a green pumpkin in a 3 8 ounce. This is a quarter ounce in the original chatterbait. This is a white. Here's another black and blue. This is a 3 8 ounce. Again, another original shad blue glimmer. And that is a one quarter ounce. And you, you kind of see what I'm going with here. You know, I tried to get two of each color and I tried to get, um, which a couple of them are already, I was actually throwing some of these chatter baits. So I don't know which ones I've got. I think I've got a blue and a green, I think in all three eighths ounce. So there might be some left out of this, but I've got them already in my tackle bag, that Ego tackle bag you guys have seen um this is the half ounce and again that's in a white another another half ounce in white here this is another half ounce we've got a half ounce in the shad and we've got a three eighths ounce in the white and last but not least really you know the jackhammers, there just wasn't that much out there. Uh, so what I decided to do is just go ahead and kind of pick one or two. I think I got the, uh, I think it was like a ghost shad. But this one is a 3 8 ounce. And the color in this one, oh, the clear water shad. Yeah, that's what it was. I got me a couple of 3 8 ounce. They didn't have the half ounce, which is I wanted to pick up. But I do have a couple in the clear water shad really really like that color now a couple things that i want to try out so i got me some 10 pound in visex got me a big spool of that and i decided to try me some 15 pound sunline now this is the assassin you know like i said the past few years i've been really trying a lot of different lines to kind of hone in on what i like about each now, went a little. I, I splurged a little. These are um, some very high-end baits, and uh, you know, I always said I'd never pay this much for a popper. But I've just had so many people tell me that they're they're worth it. That there's just something different about them. So 
I went ahead and I bought me some of the Rio Ricos. And so I went ahead and got me, of course, a bone. I mean, we're going to keep it real simple. Got me a black. And then I got me basically, uh, they call it the hammer shed, but it looks very much like that one knocker spook I like to throw in clear water. Kind of got that Tennessee shad, ghost Tennessee shad color or ghost minnow by some of your other Japanese companies. And so pretty neat little baits right there. I can't wait to tie these on and actually give them a hurl. Uh, they're very small, but they seem like they've got some weight behind them. So, Cannot wait to give those a try. Okay, so that's the Land Big Fish Labor Day sale. So now we're gonna go on to the Tackle Warehouse. Now I did get a shirt, but I think I've already been wearing it. So anyway, so one of the things that I wanted to pick up, and guys, these are super hot, and I got two of them. One of them's already in the box. Uh, I think already tied on. And this is the Fritz side. Now, I picked up two of them. Man, you cannot find any of the Berkeley stuff. The Dredger, the Digger, the Fritz size. Man, they're so sold out. This is a good looking color here. Again, reminds me a lot of a Tennessee Shad color. Got that little green gold back to it. Uh, don't have the, uh, the uh, uh, red on the throat. But this is the Fritz side. This is the seven. I don't remember exactly how deep the seven dies, uh, five to seven feet. And that's something during the spring or during the fall, those sh medium to shallow divers can be killer as they start to move to the middles and backs of the creeks. Great, great bait. And when they start to move up on those main lake points, those medium divers can be a go-to. I think this is the, uh, the honey shad. Oh no, wait, there's the other one. So that's one thing I do plan on buying a lot more of those. I've just heard so many good things about them. Now guys, this really is made up of primarily some baits. I cannot wait to use this fall. I'm gonna tell you a trick with these baits, okay? Now the 80 is generally what I'm gonna use. I uh, went ahead and got some bigger ones because as the as we move on into the late fall, these fish will get deeper and deeper. But when they really start to get on the top water, this is a bait you should think about using because a lot of times when they get on top water, you can catch some of the smaller bass on the top water, but you can take these and work them very slow, a little bit deeper and catch some of your bigger fish. And that is the spy bait. Now, you guys know in the fall, love to target those smallmouth out on top of Secret Lake S. Well, this bait is a bait that does very, very well when they get on that topwater bite because you can work this subsurface. And sometimes you'll see them chase the shad to the top but they won't actually break. That's when this bait shines at, at its most. So during the fall, a lot of times you'll see shad coming up, flipping on top, running, but the bass themselves aren't committing to breaking surface. This is what you need to throw. Now, I'm gonna tell you about the differences in size. So the Spy Bait 80, and what I love about the Spy Bait 80 is it's very small profile because they get into chasing those teeny tiny shad a lot of times in the fall. That's kind of what you'll run into in the fall. You'll find them chasing either very large shad. That's always great because that means there's some big fish chasing the large shad. That's when you want to pull out your swim baits and that sort of stuff. Big top waters. But a lot of times those smallmouth over on Top Secret Lake S, Top Secret C, or the Big Indian, uh, Top Secret uh, Lake W, they're chasing those small, small shad, those yearling shad, which are, you know, a lot of times two inches long. 
And this is a great profile for that. And what I love about it is the weight. So it's three and one eighth inches. And the weight on this is three eighths ounce. So that's a little heavy, but you can still get it down low. You can reel it fast. You can reel it slow. If they're super active, you can reel it a little quicker. It's got that great movement on it and keep it just five, 10, 15 feet below. Guys, again, I'll say it over and over and over again. I think the widest array to me, the best action on the market really is the Realis spin bait. Uh, and this is the 80. Now this color right here is the spin bait 80. Uh, it's the spinner model. This is, I believe the ghost minnow. Clear water, you don't get a better color than that. That is the spin bait 80 in ghost minnow. The spin bait 80 in bone, again, just barely over three inches. Now I'll put a little bit of color into this one. This is the spin bait 80 in thread fin shad, which a lot of those, uh, a lot of those small mouth are chasing those small thread fin shad. This is the sartreuse shad, which is always a great color when you're talking about spots and uh, small mouth. So again, that's the, the spy bait 80 or the spin bait 80 by duo realis. Again, to me, best on the market, guys. Um, this is the 90. Now the 90 is a little bit bigger. It's a little bit bigger profile. If you're searching for, you know, large mouth, they're still chasing those small shad. They're a little deeper, you know, out on those points. You know, they're, they've just moved up. They're in that first third of the creek or main lake point still. This 90 may be for you. Uh, this is the ghost minnow. Now this is three and a half inches, but it's just overall a better, bigger profile. Now this is a half ounce, so you're gonna be able to fish it a little deeper too. So that is the spy bait or spin bait 90. Here's the sartreuse shad. And that's another thing, even though they're chasing small shad, sometimes you can throw that little bigger profile and that gets their attention as opposed to directly matching the sh matching the hatch, as you know they say. Uh, it's something I've learned with uh, swim baits a lot. Sometimes you're better to be slightly bigger. You know, we're talking about finger food as opposed to the main course. And uh, sometimes you'll get the bigger fish to come up and hit those. And this is a prime example of that. You go just slightly bigger, that half ounce go a little bit deeper. That again is the thread fin shad. And of course, last but not least, good old bone. You know guys, I always say I keep my colors very simple. And you know, you'll see here. Now I'm gonna pick up some more of these. They were sold out of a lot of these. I uh, really need to get that ghost minnow in this size. And I really think this will pay off for the large mouth, even during the summer. And this is the spin bait 100s. Again, got it in sartreuse. You know, I want to pick it up in that bone color too. And I believe this is the ghost minnow right here. It is the ghost minnow, but I also want to pick that up in the thread fin. Want to pick me up another one of those. You know, that was really about all they had. But like I said, that is a great fall bait. Um, a lot of people don't think about it being a fall bait, but I'm telling you, when they're out there hitting top water, and you guys know, I love me some top water. But if the top water bite is just a little off, it's just a little tough, you see them breaking, but they're not biting, that spy bait can put those fish in the boat. All right, guys, again, sorry. I am trying to do my best to pump some videos out. You know, the views have been a little low, you know, so, so make sure you tell everybody, please watch right now. Um, I know we're hit or miss. That is going to get better once we get the house in. The house is just taking so much of my time. All that being said, guys, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. You know, as always, like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell so you get the notifications when these videos come out. And as always, 
you guys rock.